it's so thick it puts Cardi B to shame. Hi, welcome back to What the Hell, This Isn't My Home Kitchen. Today's tipsy culinary adventure, Korean barbecue. How to do it and how to do it right. We're here at one of my absolute favorite places to eat Izibon sushi and barbecue in Metro West Orlando. Now, if you've never heard of this type of thing before, five words, all you can eat meats, which just so happen to be my five favorite words other than no honey, I'll cook dinner. In the next couple of minutes, we're gonna be definitively answering some of the questions that you may have about Korean barbecue and are probably asking your screen right now, such as why in the hell would I wanna cook my own food at a restaurant and how do I do it properly? Let's go inside and find out. Ah uh, yes, my favorite wine, Pinot Niar. Nior? Now they don't call this tipsy walk for nothing. So uh, we got our, we're gonna try some soju beer it makes right now. Soju is a white spirit with clean and refined taste distilled from the best grain. Wow, that simultaneously told me everything and nothing. So the way that this typically works, we found out is uh, about a 70% beer, 30% soju mix. Very light, ooh, it's fruity, Oh wow. Mm. Mm, that's dangerous. Now, unlike that one friend that you had in high school that everyone knew was gay except for him, the food doesn't take that long to come out. I mean, it's literally just a plate of raw meat. How long could it take, right? So, while we're waiting for that, I ran up to the sidebar that they had. Now, they have a really, really generous sidebar here, and I grabbed a bunch of banchan, or traditional Korean side dishes. Here, the really cool thing is that there is a whole extended list of uh, all-you-can-eat appetizers as well, but, Rule number one of Korean barbecue. The star of the show, the meat of the matter is, well, the meat. That's where you want to get your money's worth. Ow. Actually, uh, rule number one is don't wear nice clothes to Korean barbecue because uh, whatever you end up wearing here, you're gonna end up smelling like a grease fryer gave birth to a barbecue pit. Some places actually cook the meat for you. They'll bring it to you and they'll cook it for you on your table, but a lot of places you don't. So in case you're wondering, hey, I have no idea how to do this. Hey, this looks really intimidating. I'm gonna show you exactly how to cook all the meats on this menu. So first thing you do, make sure you get the grill nice and hot. Get your tongs. I'm gonna add in the, uh, the vegetables first. Some garlic as well. You add your brisket. Now brisket is really nice because it is super, super thin, right? So it cooks super quickly. And it's also like the Switzerland of Korean barbecue meat, which means it's totally nice and neutral. You can add whatever sauce you want, dip it in whatever you want, get all that surface area that you can, leave it there. You only really want to flip it once because if you flip it too many times, then it starts to get really dry and you don't want to do that. So leave it on there, let it do its thing. Once one side is ready, flip it over. Let that cook to about 85, 90, 90% or so, and then take it off. You're gonna have perfectly cooked brisket every single time. I'm gonna throw in some kimchi to kind of get that grilled. Now this is about mostly cooked. Uh, most of the pink is gone. So what I'm gonna do here is add some of this kimchi sauce which actually doesn't taste that much like kimchi. I mean, it sort of does, but it's more sweet and less spicy. Stir that around a little bit. I know this kind of goes against my um, my rule of no flipping more than once, but uh, you know what? Sometimes it just doesn't matter and you want some meat in your mouth. Phrasing. This looks to be mostly done. The last vestiges of pink are disappearing. I'm gonna go ahead and shut off the heat so that once the heat is shut off, it's gonna finish cooking here. Now there's a couple different ways to eat any of these styles of meat. So what you can do is you, you could just eat it straight off the grill or you grab one of these big lettuce wraps. Now the goal of this is to be able to create a wrap that you can eat in one, maybe two bites. We're gonna add that much there. Some of our kimchi that's not exactly grilled, but you know what, oh well. Take a bit of this soybean paste, just a minute amount. Like you don't want way too much. You know, you don't wanna douse it. This isn't American food. Curl it up like a little, you know, leaf taco. And then you just mm. you get all the umami from the soybean paste. You get the sweetness from the kimchi sauce, the spice from the kimchi. Ah, the flavors all really come together. It's so 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 good. Something else you can do. You can do the same with um, Korean radish, daikon. Grab it in the middle. Out hot. Well, that didn't work. I need a spoon. Don't have a spoon. Don't know why I don't have a spoon, but you know what? Whatever. So good. So good. 
So we got some pork belly here next. It's so thick it puts Cardi B to shame. It's probably gonna take the longest time to cook. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay two of these pieces in the middle. And I'm gonna place our bulgogi, our marinated sirloin, I think it's bulgogi, around it. And this is typically how it's done. You know, people will grill, you know, whatever it is that they want. They'll split the grill up into sections and then, you know, grill some beef here, grill some chicken here, grill some pork belly here. Okay, so, been cooking for a little while. Really important, remember, just to flip once, especially with things that are a lot easier to leave in one piece. There we go. As long as you get all of the raw color out, or most of the raw color out, depending on how you like your sirloin, um, you should be good. Look at that fat just running off. God, that looks so good. You see all like the, the charred bits? That's kind of when you want to flip this over. Look at that, the color, like, from all the residue of the kimchi that we left in the middle from the last time, it just gives it that beautiful tinge. Oh, this sirloin is definitely ready. So I'm gonna teach you how to cut it. You're gonna hold it up like this. You're gonna cut from the bottom, right? That you have something to hold onto on the top here. It helps if you have a good pair of scissors. If it's not really cutting for you, you can kind of use the base of the scissors more than the, uh, the end, because the base will cut better. Okay. This pretty much looks to be ready. And you can also eat any of your meat over white rice. You gotta be really careful though, because this stuff fills you up really, really quick. We have our um, sesame oil and salt. I've heard this is actually really, really good. We're gonna try it out. Ooh, ah. Ugh. Sorry. I don't know how to describe it. The sesame oil is so strong, and it gives it such a Death. I guess it's umami. I don't know. I'm using that word too much. I'm gonna try this eggplant. Looks sufficiently grilled, don't you think? I don't know. Let's find out. Learned my lesson from last time. Oh, nope. Still hot. Oh, that's good. So this is looking about ready. The sizzle looks absolutely delicious. I'm gonna dip it in some chili oil or some hot oil. Oh. Mmm. Oh, hot. So after a while, your grill is gonna start looking all disgusting and crusty and has all sorts of different uh, residue on it. You can get it changed out. Get a nice clean grill, you start all over, and uh, you can you make sure that your flavors don't mix too much. So let's go on to the next thing. Wine pork belly, pretty much the same as regular pork belly, only soaked in white wine. A common question people get is, how do I know if the, the meat is ready to eat? Cut it open and you cut it in half. Check the color of the meat that you just cut. If there's any sort of like pinkness or anything still in there, it's probably not ready yet. Or depending on, you know, what you're cooking and how you like it, maybe it is. These scissors can't cut anything, man. They couldn't even cut the fat kid from the football team. Man, this is a thick piece of chicken. It takes a really long time to cook. It looks about ready, yeah. Hmm. I mean, it's chicken, you know? I typically don't like to order chicken when I come to a place like this because you know, you want to go for the more expensive cuts. So we have the uh, spicy pork here. All this redness is not from any pre-existing stuff on the uh, on the grill. That is all spicy seasoning. Woo! I have had a lot of soju. Ooh. Yeah, that's good. It's spicy. So by far, my most favorite part of the meal is uh, at the end of the meal when they bring you these. Now, these are a uh, Korean frozen dessert. Uh, basically yogurt, semi-frozen yogurt. Uh, it acts as a semi-probiotic, if you will, so to kind of help settle your stomach. Really, really delicious, if you can get it open. Oh, God, that's good. So hopefully you learned a thing or two about Korean barbecue, you know, how to cook them, what to combine with the foods that you get, what meats to order, how to cook the meat. Uh, if you have any further questions, uh, please let me know in the comments below. If you liked our content, hit the subscribe button. Oh, God, I'm full. Hope you liked it. And uh, as always, we will uh... oh, we'll see you next week. Bye. Today's tipsy culinary adventure, we're, uh, blah, 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 blah. I'm nervous now, there are people around. We're here at one of my absolute, most favorite, absolute, most favorite, what? We're here at one of my, wow. Mm.